Does shame come from not seeing ourselves out there in the world and media as being sexual and valuable? I'm here with Jiminika Eborn from SoJim, S-E-W-J-I-M.com, and I'm Kathy Bertulli from the IntimacyDojo.com, and we're not always seen out there. We're, we're, and we don't always match the, um, which, which of these things don't belong? I think of like the Sesame Street game where you're having like sexual people and you see young and, and, um, blonde and slender and then you see somebody who's maybe not those things and it's like Err. um I, I you know both you and I work a lot with people who have deep shame and how debilitating it can be when mm -hmm. that shame it, shame is not sexy that's one thing I learned I, I think that it's if you're with the enlightened people it's not the bigger body or the age or the color of our skin or um, what gender we are even any of those things can be not important but shame tends to people don't want to be around shameful people it's not usually very comfortable um, and unfortunately our culture is full of shame inducing things uh, I feel like shame meets you at the door sometimes <laughs> and you're like wait a minute and I think the fact that shame doesn't have like a specific look yeah. It doesn't look for a specific type of person. Anyone can be shamed, which is kind of scary. And the way it affects people and holds on to them, it's it can be like jaunting. Like it's crazy to see someone that's like full of shame that they can't even like maneuver through life. Yeah. Well, it is. And especially if we have early wounds from childhood. I know that a lot of the people I work with, and I think you as well, Mm. had rough childhoods or childhoods that induced shame where they felt they weren't right or they, there was something wrong with them. And I think that, you know, I know I've personally done a tremendous amount of healing work for past childhood abuse and it, there's still there's still soft spots where it can stick really fast. And I'm not sure, I think everyone is subject to shame because it's something that our society uses to control people. It teaches us we're not enough, so should we, we should be quiet or we should go along with the crowd. And I think there's a certain group of media and, and other people that it's really comfortable for them, especially if they fit in the acceptable ones. There's not a, a desire to expand that acceptance or, or reduce the shame other people feel. Yeah, and it's always so interesting to me like when new things come out and it's like, who the hell is making this stuff up that's now made this new box that we all see? are supposed to fit into like who are you and how did you get this this role this job to put everyone else down and make us all feel like crap like how did you get this job and how can we burn it down yeah, like, yeah. well i saw a, I, was, I, I didn't go deeply into it but i saw there was an ad for uh, bleach for genital areas for um i guess it was something in indian the uh, from india people from india were um it was an advertisement for aimed at them and I was like wow why is it supposed to be why are we supposed to be light a lighter color down there to be desirable I, you know and but if you start selling stuff like that you do you you do you can create it like wow they're selling this thing and they're implying that I'm not okay wow and we have such women are often have a lot of shame around their genitals and how we look and we may not look like that porn star looks and mm -hmm. um and that's and that's kind of in my mind like when i drive i have a lot of free time to myself <laughs> i often think that the media creates all these things or people or whoever is creating these boxes to keep us down so they can continue to make money off of us yeah well if, if i feel like i'm not acceptable i'm willing and i i mean sex and love are so desirable like i want to connect deeply with human beings that matter to me and if I'm feeling ashamed, if I'm feeling there's something that's not as delightful to bring to my partner or partners and say, here, let's share this, I'm going to spend money to try to fix it. But it's yeah. also, then I'm feeling like I'm not good enough, too. I'm, I'm not just bringing the, I'm now, I've now shaved, you know, gotten rid of all the hair so I look like that model a little bit. Maybe yeah. there's people that get surgeries, so they look like the, the, the porn star they saw. Um, and we're not we're not exposed to how different how different people look down there, male or female, um, and anything that gets in the way of that really beautiful connection of this is me, all of me, flaws and and wonder and all of it, 
and I would like to connect with this other person who is wonderful and yeah. has flaws like that anything that gets in the way of that is just it's almost criminal to me yeah and I think that um, we kind of talked about it earlier not in this video but that kind of leads to like you have to work on yourself you have to figure out who your authentic self is or you will fall into this vicious cycle of life that everyone falls into again no one is exempt there's no like oh no you've made it cross the line that doesn't exist well no like Cindy Crawford doesn't look like Cindy Crawford looks like I mean with the photoshopping and everything else there is no finish line and even if you're you're on the cover of Vogue it doesn't mean you actually look like that or that you always look like that like even if they didn't photoshop someone like that's their best day that's after having someone have done their makeup for two hours and just the right light and 300 photographs that they picked the best one in the best outfit ever like we're not going to look like that when we stroll out on a Saturday like I was taking the trash out and I'm like in my like sweat clothes and my hair was sticking up a little bit and I'm like hi neighbors um it's we don't look like that on an every day none of us can no, and it's true we can't I mean no one wakes up with that much makeup on looking beautiful every day if so I don't know what your secret is and also you may have bad skin because you need to wash your face <laughs> <laughs> but it's like waking up every day we have like a different fight um, and so that's kind of like I get up in the morning and before I get it, I meditate to get my mind right for whatever else is happening in the world. Yeah. It's, you have to build yourself up because you never know what's going to be waiting for you at the door. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to come back and do another video on finding that authentic self because I think for a lot of us, there's not a clear path to that. And we might've been struggling with that. I'd love to hear oh, what sure. you think about that. So if you have any yeah. comments or thoughts, we'd love to hear. This is a topic dear to both of our hearts. Um, Jiminyko, how can they reach you if they wanted to send you a, quest a question directly? Yeah, um, I have a contact space on my website, so jim.com, and it goes straight to me, and I respond back within 24 hours, and normally really quick, Wonderful. like within an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and you can reach me at kathy at the intimacy dojo. Dot com. Um, I'm not always within 24 hours, but I do get back to people. And you can also leave any comments below or questions, and we're glad to get back to you. Thanks very much.